one of the most important things with hypothermia is, is, is not to panic. If you fall in, the, the hardest part is not to panic. You need to just try and calm yourself. Uh, they say that the first uh, 20 to 30 seconds in the water is the most critical, whether you're going to figure out what you're going to do. Um, once you can try and get your air, grasp your air and just uh, stabilize yourself, then try and figure out what uh, is your best way to get out of the water and where you're going to go, and then uh, start to move towards doing that without trying to panic. Before you set out, make sure that you have the proper amount of life jackets and of appropriate size for the people on board and uh, all the other safety equipment. You need your uh, first aid kit, whistle, compass, flashlights, um, depending on the size of the boat, different kinds of flares, uh, life-saving buoy. Um, there's a throw rope that you should have and paddles. And one important thing with life jackets, a lot of people just have them in their boat, which is great, but something can happen so quickly when you're out on the lake or river. So it's important to have the life jacket on, especially if you have young ones in the boat. If something happens, you're not going to be able to help the little ones, so always wear your life jacket. There are lots of different types of uh, life jackets out there. Some of them that uh, we're seeing more and more are the inflatable types. The inflatable types are only, uh, they only count count in the boat if it's actually being worn. It has to be worn to be accountable in the boat. So there's two boys, they're navigational aids that would assist you in, in staying either to the left or the right of different ha hazards. Um, there's lots of different day markers, uh, hazard markers. Um, I mean, you can go in pretty depth. You need to refer to the, the Canada Shipping Guides and, and uh, some of the marine guides that are available to find out which ones uh, are more appropriate. Some lakes don't have them at all, and then uh, some of the more navigable lakes do have them that are charted. And uh, you just need to familiarize yourself with uh, which way is upstream and downstream to know which side of those markers you need to be on to avoid uh, hitting the hazards that they're marking. You don't want to pull away from a dock and then go full speed right away, the wash of your boat will end up doing damage to the docks and rightfully so when you're coming back into the docks you want to make sure you slow down right down quite a ways out and allow yourself uh, lots of time to figure out how you're going to approach the docks. Winds is a big one and will change uh, the manner in how you approach the docks. If it's really windy and it's pushing you towards the docks then uh, you want to be able to be right down in your speed and be prepared to put it into reverse to slow that approach. Depending on the time of day, if it's uh, daytime, you'd want to raise your arms up and down to any passing uh, vessel so that you can alert them that there is something wrong and that you, uh, you need some assistance. Uh, if it's at nighttime, then hopefully you have those flares that you're supposed to have on board and you can use those and also have a flashlight and a whistle. All those items will come in, in, in handy to uh, getting you uh, some assistance out there. In addition, it's really important if you are going out on the lake for the day or the river to let a family member know where you're going and plan ahead and plan for the weather to change. So always be prepared. And if you have your phone, make sure it's charged. Most importantly is to make sure that you have all the proper equipment in the boats and ready to go. Make sure your passengers know where the safety equipment is located and don't drink and boat.